Hi, I'm David Gristwood. I work at Microsoft in the Developer and Platform Group, and I spent the last year or two working with the cloud. So I want to kind of give you five tips about using the cloud as an entrepreneur and building new systems out there. So tip number one, really easy. Um, cloud computing is all about being online. It sounds really obvious, even perhaps quite glib to say it, but in the last 10 years, we've seen some really big shifts in the way people actually use computers. Um, if you go back to the days of, for us, Windows 95, it was the days people bought boxes, they took them home, they opened them, and they sort of ran you know, games online. No, you couldn't do that. It was, a, you know, it was just with a computer, you entered your tax stuff by manually typing in stuff from your checkbook. But now, you know, the generation Y people, they've only ever known online. It's what they expect. And so, the first tip is all about thinking about what can you do now that you could never do before. Um, Chris Anderson in his uh, article, The Long Tail, talked about this Gaussian distribution that, you know, at the moment if you think about the experiences of going into town and going to a record shop, um, there's a relatively small number of albums and DVDs available because they can only afford to stock the stuff that really actually makes it to the mass markets. But he figured out that, you know, if you can somehow reach out to the people at the other end of the tail where there may be individually small groups of them, but together they equal a large volume, you can actually make money from that sort of thing. And that's really helped inspire people to think about things in different ways. I've worked with a partner recently, for example, who has been taking the process of, you know, the, the business stuff inside an organization, you know, this needs to happen and that needs to happen. It's a solution that used to be quite expensive, you had to have it put on site. Now they have it up in the cloud, they can afford to sell it to really small companies that really benefit from this, but it's all cloud-based, they don't have anything on-premise. Number two then would be, it's all about harnessing the power of Web 2.0. So, Web 1.0 was really quite a static world, you know, at some extremes it was simply about putting your brochures online, or at best taking simple orders. But Web 2.0, you know, was about sharing and collaboration. For example, um, search engines use various, um, you know, ranking algorithms to work out if I search for something, which of the many, many pages out on the internet should I actually bubble up to the top? And that's because, you know, people reference other sites and the more people who reference it or the more important those links, the higher that's likely to be in the ranking. So if you can think about how can you share experience out on the internet, that's a very powerful way of working. I use Amazon a lot, uh, you know, apart from the sheer convenience of being able to sit at home and order stuff. Um, the fact is, I use the rating system a lot, you know, the fact that people bought this product and they actually went to the effort of rating it and commenting on other ratings and I got the people who bought this also bought this or people who looked at this page 85% went on to buy it whereas another 10% went and bought this item instead. That's very, very powerful, more powerful than just simply selling the, the item itself. So Web 2.0 is about harnessing that collaboration. Tip number three would be to use the cloud as a way of sort of bringing together different devices. Here at Microsoft we have this little uh, phrase, uh, three screens in a cloud, and the three screens refer to firstly the traditional PC, secondly mobile devices, which for us are sort of uh, Windows Mobile and the Zune. And the third one is the TV. You know, I've got a media center at home underneath my TV. I've also got an Xbox. And these are the three most important screens that I have. This is where I'm likely to be viewing information and interacting with systems. The cloud is the bit that actually links it all together. So what happens is, you know, today, it's quite typical. I would expect they demand that I could be doing email on my PC, leave the office, and when I'm sitting on a train with my mobile phone, carry on accessing the same services. And the only way you can do that is if they're up in the cloud. I have a Zoom, I have a Zoom library, and I have an account there. I would expect to be able to access that on my PC, on my Zoom device, and you know, on my Xbox as well. So once I've invested in these services, the ability to access them with a UI that's been optimized for those different devices just makes a lot of sense for me, and the, the cloud makes that all happen. The fourth one would be, it's all about getting you out of the hosting and machine management business. A lot of the people who actually have a great idea about want to be the next Facebook, the next Twitter, the next Spotify, um, you have the idea, you build your system, and then suddenly you have to keep it alive, you have to keep it up and running 24-7. Uh, that requires a whole load of different skills. You know, the people who can configure firewalls and DNS servers and set up back to directory forest, 
are not the people who are going to be building a system and you know, designing for scalability. And therefore, you've got to think, do I really want to be in the hosting business? And for most people, no. With Microsoft, have done a lot of work with uh, Windows Azure platform, so you can just focus on building the application, and you know, just building that will take over a lot of the hosting. Because people are doing hosting, and they really don't want to be in it. And finally, uh, the cloud scale, scale and elasticity. Um, the two nightmare scenarios for people building a system are either firstly, no one uses it, or secondly, everyone uses it. Uh, obviously, the first case of no one using it, that kind of speaks for itself. But if everyone starts using the system, how well have you built it for scalability? Do you physically have enough machines to host it? You don't want the, the systems crashing and burning because you haven't allocated enough resources. And you don't want to buy lots of computers on the off chance that a system is actually going to be successful. So the ability to sort of scale up and down in response to changes, to peaks and demands, this is where the cloud can really help. Because you know, back in the data centers, we have lots of machines and we can flip them on and off as demand. So one end you have you know, concert providers who tickets go live at 9 a.m. and you need hundreds of machines ready for that. And at the other scale, you have apps that kind of people switch on when they come back from work and just check what's happening, perhaps making their plans for the weekend. Cloud really helps you with that elasticity.